Hey, welcome to the Modern Algebra Made Easy series. My name is Scott Hader, and I'm going to attempt to make a pretty comprehensive series on Modern Algebra. We'll see. So far I've got about four videos uploaded. So today we're going to be talking about the binary operation. And that basically looks like this. It looks like a star, and it's some operation that's unspecified. It could be multiplication, addition, it could be really anything you define it. It could be the greatest integer function, something like that. So, but in modern algebra we don't need to specify it. So we'd, we'd just work with it as an unspecified binary operation and it gives us, in you know, generally they'll give us some something to work with. So, Let's talk about the what it means to be a binary operation. There are two criteria. The first is it needs to be closed. In other words, whenever you do this operation between two elements in your set, the results should also be in your set. So if we're talking about the integers, if you add two integers together, the result is also an integer. So that would be closed. And this last criteria she was a criterion earlier, but anyways, the last criteria is that there needs to be exactly one output. So, for instance, it can't be like where x squared equals nine. X could be either positive three or negative three, and that won't work in this case. We need to have exactly one output. Okay, so some examples of binary operations. We're going to define star this time to be A over B. So we're dividing A and B. And the question is, is star defined on the rationals? Well, you can think about it for a moment if you want. But if B is 0, which is a rational number, then we have an undefined output. So, star is not defined over the rationals. But if we're just talking about the positive rationals, it's no problem <laughs> because we're always going to have exactly one output. And it will be a positive rational as an output, won't it? Whenever we divide two rational numbers, we also get two, two positive rational numbers, we also get a positive rational number and only one positive rational number. This is a basic, good, some more examples I think. So this time we're talking about the positive integers. You might think, well of course, if it works for the positive rationals, it's got to work for the positive integers. But this time, why doesn't it work? We're good on it having exactly one output. But is that output an integer? So if a is 3 and b is 4, when we divide those two, we get 3 fourths, don't we? And that's not a positive integer. So in this case, our set would not be closed. So it's not a binary operation. So just a couple things to note for your reference. Commutativity, if, in case you don't remember, that means we can flip the order. We can rewrite them, we can just switch them. A star B is B star A. Associativity, another important one, means you can change the order in which you do things. You can regroup. In other words, A star B star C equals A star B star C. So those are important to remember. So we'll be working with those a lot. Okay, a couple true or false questions. Is A star A always A for all A in any binary operation? And there are countless examples why this is not true, but if A is 2 and we take multiplication to be our defined operation, well, 2, two times 2 is not 2. So A star A is not A. 
for all A. Alright, so if star is commutative, can we say that A star B star C equals B star C star with A? Remember, uh, commutative, that means you can switch them around. And that's exactly what they've done here. So in this case, it'd be a yes. And I made something to make this a little more obvious. B star C is going to be some output. Let's call it D. Then if you put that in for B star C, you have A star D equals D star A, which look exact, looks exactly like our definition of commutativity. So another one, star is associative this time, is A star B star C equal to B star C star A. Well, can you get from the left side to the right side by just regrouping? We could write A and B together with C off to the right, but we can't just flip the order for associativity, for an associative binary operation. So in this case it would be no. So another true or false. The only binary operations of any importance are those defined on sets of numbers. Well, most of the time in math we deal with numbers, but in modern algebra, we just we don't it's it's abstract. It's more abstract, so we're not necessarily talking about just numbers. We could be talking about shifts, permutations, these types of things. Uh, these are really a big topic in modern algebra. The symmetric groups is what this topic is called, and I I don't plan on going too much into depth on this topic, if at all. I, I'm covering permutations, but I'm not sure if I'm covering symmetric groups. But uh, unless I get a special request or something like that. But uh, the point is that we're not necessarily just talking about numbers. We could be talking about an abstract set that's that is closed. We could be talking about matrices, which is not just numbers. So. Matrices can be defined on a binary operation, and also you can have groups of matrices and so forth. So we'll see more examples of those later on. I think that question will be pretty intuitive. Okay, so next question: A binary operation is commutative if there exists an A and a B in the set such that A star B equals B star A. Well, you may be thinking A star B equals B star A. That's what commutative means. He just told me that. You know, that's got to be true. But if you look at the wording, it says if there exists an A and a B. And our, our set is commutative only if all the elements commute with each other. In other words, it needs to be A star B equals B star A for all the A and B, the, the A's and B's in our set. So you got to be careful on the wording a little bit. So every binary operation defined on a set having exactly one element is both commutative and associative. Well, if there's only one element, and this is what's really cool about modern algebra, you have these interesting scenarios that they give you, and you have to figure out how to use that information. So this set is just one element, and if it's a binary operation, it's closed, isn't it? Because that's how a binary operation a binary operation is defined. So if it's closed, then A star A must equal an element in the set, which the element in the set is A. And so A start with A star A equals A star A start with A. So it's it is associative. And it's also commutative. Okay, so proof time. We got an associative binary operation, and it, it wants us to show that this set here 
is closed under star. So remember, being closed means when you take two elements in the set, you get another element in the set. So we want to show that when we take two elements, A and B, in our set, and we star that with some element in the bigger set, that it's commutative, that you can flip it. So in other words, A star B star with X equals X star A star B. And the reason we're trying to show that a star b star with x, in other words, the reason we're trying to show that this is commutative is because this is how our our subset is defined. So for it to be closed, when we take two elements in the set that commute with x, the result a star b should also commute with x. So I put in bold here what we're trying to show, and I just set up the first line, and this is what we have to work with. We know these, we're taking two elements that commute with x. So that's what we have to work with, and we're going to start with a star b start with x. And we need to get that to look like, where's my mouse cursor, we need that to look like this. So. We can regroup since the set is associative by definition. We can flip the order of x and b since we know that b and x commute with each other. Now we can regroup again because we know our set's associative. And we can do the same trick. We know a and x commute. And now we can regroup one more time, and that's what we wanted to show. We wanted to start with A star B, start with X, and get to the final line. So we've, we've done what it asks us to do. We show that it's closed. Thanks for watching. This is a, just an introductory video. I'm going to plan on making uh, several more. I have no idea the total number somewhere around maybe 15 to 20. And, uh, any feedback is very welcome. Just let me know. Any questions, just let me know. And I'd be happy to hear from any of you guys. Thanks.